Good afternoon, welcome to the review of the Force 1761. This is a uh, a bare bones or fully customizable version of MSI's uh, 783 series. Uh, basically everything about the computer can be pretty much customized. Uh, we'll talk a little bit here today about one of the new customizations we're doing for this model. Typically um, the bare bones versions, uh, as you can see, are not, if you've watched the, our other video, are not as flashy. Um, you know, no brushed aluminum, it's, it's um, hard plastic. Uh, so they're, they're a little uh, less glamorous. Um, but the guts are identical, and traditionally the keyboards have not been. But as you can see, uh, we are fully customizing this with the SteelSeries keyboard, uh, including all the software and allowing you to change zones, just like on the branded model. So that's kind of new for the series, and it's pretty, uh, pretty fun, pretty uh, neat thing. Uh, it, it's not um, something that could be necessarily done at home, so it's uh, it's pretty inexpensive. I think it's about forty dollars. Uh, for the customization, so it's something that if you order this model, you'd want to do. Uh, you know, we want to have us do that before it left here, uh, because it requires quite a lot of Dremel work and and a few other things just to make it uh, customized so that it fits in this machine. Um, but we'll show you that here in a little bit. But uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, we wanted to give you an, an idea of what the computer looked like, and. Um, just kind of go over some of its uh, features and, and so on and so forth. This particular model is customized uh, for this review video in, uh, in a way that's pretty economical. Uh, the model that we manufactured here has an i7-2630 uh, in it. Uh, it does come with a GTX 570M NVIDIA graphics card, so a real high-end graphics card. We've configured it with 8 gigs of RAM. It does have four DIMMs, two under the keyboard, two uh, under the bottom panel. Uh, so this was configured with 8 gigs of RAM, which it's just cheap enough anymore that it's almost the standard. Uh, Wi-Fi cards are fully upgradable. Uh, that's hidden underneath this panel here, um, which can be uh, installed by yourself or by us. Uh, just a variety. Uh, right now, this uh, just has this, the standard... Uh, Realtek card in it at the moment. Uh, well, I use a Theros or, or Realtek cards as, as stock cards. Uh, we, as you can see here, we also did customize it with a Steel Series keyboard, um, and it does have space for two hard drives. Uh, currently, this one just has a single 750, but you can run dual hard drives. Those, of, of course, if you get the offerings from us, maybe SSD, a variety of different brands of SSDs. Um, the main two. Uh, ports on this are SATA 3, so um, you know you, you can take advantage of the new SATA 3 SSDs and, and gain quite a bit of speed that way. Um, the optical bay, if you did uh, add a hard drive there doing an optical bay um, caddy, is SATA 2, just like um, every other manufacturer is, is doing on theirs, so not including SATA 3 ports on that. Um, the screen itself is a matte finish screen. It's a pretty nice screen. Obviously, it's non-gloss. It's the stock screen. Those are fully upgradable to 90% gamut screen, 72% matte finish. Um, the 90% is a glossy. Uh, so for someone who wants um, the shinier screen, but uh, much more uh, vibrant color because of the accuracy uh, to the NTSC standard and on the color gamut, um, that is going to be uh, a much better option and, and it is available for customization on our website. We'll talk a little bit more about the screen later and, and show view angles and things like that, but the stock uh, stock screen is actually pretty nice uh, on this on this particular machine. Um, just like a lot of the other machines, it's got a webcam, built-in microphone, um, as we'll mention later on here, the, the speakers by Dynaudio are just fantastic. Um, two speakers and a subwoofer as well. Uh, and um, overall, this is a pretty economic build, um, but as you'll see later, it's um, a pretty high performing as well. So this is, review is really to show you that um, you can put together a, a bare bones machine pretty economically uh, that will really rock for, for gaming or for video editing, photo editing, things like that. Um, some people will like the, the more um, basic design. Um, I actually do myself. Uh, it, it's not um, an unattractive design by any means, but it's not flashy like um, a lot of the other branded machines are. We'll talk a little bit about the keyboard, touchpad, um, some of the touch keys at the top. Uh, unlike a lot of the other Force models based on MSI designs, uh, this does have 
uh, pretty much an identical audio and audio system and touchpad system uh, where normally these keys are not functioning uh, on the force models or on the bare bones models. Um, MSI has included the functionality of the GT783 touchpad uh, touch buttons into this here. Uh, going over that, uh, this does use the S-Bar controller which controls all these buttons. If your key to open up the optical disk drive doesn't work, your S-Bar is probably not installed. Um, that's something that will come on the driver's disk. The, uh, the rest of the keys here are, pro the P1 is the programmable uh, key. You can pretty much program it to whatever you want within the S-Bar. The second button here just opens up uh, Cinema Pro and your uh, media player. The, this here has the same function as the, uh, as the GT783. You'll hear the, the fans start to ramp up. That's basically just the turbo fan kicking in. It, uh, it really, as you'll hear it here pretty soon, it really gets going. The computer itself has a really great um, cooling system to begin with. The fan, just like the other, is, is just enormous. And uh, we'll, we'll kind of scroll in here on the, the hardware monitor to show you some temps. But uh, core temps on CPU, see we've run some benchmarks on here to get those temps up on the max. But you know, current temps right now are just idle sitting, you know, 35-ish um, on the uh, CPU and GPU, which this is a GTX 570M that, that uh, is installed in this model is all the way down to 33 Celsius and idle. So, uh, very ample cooling, which is quite nice. The Even without the turbo fan turned on, uh, which we'll turn it off now, it takes a little bit to, to get off. But, uh, you know, the temps are still really quite good even with that turbo off. But if you're hammering on it real hard, you can kick that button on. And if you don't mind the, the noise, it will uh, it will give you better cooling. The uh, the other button here, this is just to kind of kick on the, the webcam. It does allow you to turn it on and off. Uh, some like that, just security type purposes. Um, I don't know if you Skype a lot or something and calls you and catches you in a way you don't want to be caught, you can turn that off. You've got um, the Wi-Fi button here. This is a common mistake made on the MSI models, including this one, is that if we kick that off, the Wi-Fi radio is off. So if you're trying to install your own OS, um, you would need to install the S-Bar first before you can install the, the drivers for either the Bluetooth or the wireless because uh, you'll have to turn on their radios here, and of course this is the Bluetooth radio. So you'll get a GUI on the screen which will show you when you press it, it will We'll give you a demonstration here. It'll come up on there and, and let you know that it's on or off. Um, <clears throat> but those need to be turned on before any drivers or anything can be installed. Uh, it will just give you an error and say that it doesn't find anything. Um, this button here turns off the uh, turns off the monitor. So if you're using an external or something and trying to conserve power or whatnot, um, kicking it, that on and off. Once again, a somewhat common common. Uh, question that we get is, you know, why did my monitor turn off? You just tap the space bar to turn it back on. And as I mentioned just a second ago, this little key here opens up your optical drive. Uh, we'll see it in here in a second, but that is the only, besides doing it through software within the OS, that's the only button that you've got. Uh, MSI has designed the faceplate uh, without that button that, that tells the optical drive to, to kick out. So that, that is your button, or, or you can just do it within the OS by you know right-clicking and, and shooting eject. Just want to show you here real quick the, uh, the keyboard mod modification that we've done here. This is the SteelSeries keyboard, the same one that is on the GT783 series. Uh, right now it looks like it's pulsating just from color to color. You can fully customize that. There are three sections. As you can see them here, the three different colored sections. You can customize those by color. Uh, you can make it so just the left hand side works if you're wanting to illuminate the WASD keys for gaming or whatnot. Uh, you can set it to all the same color to white. To, uh, we'll show you here in a second software wise, but it uses uses their KLM software, which controls all the lighting. If the KLM software isn't installed, the backlighting will work, but it's only going to be white. Uh, it does require the other software to to work basically. Um, but this is a really neat 
uh, customization because not only is it a backlight keyboard for a barebone model, which this is the first one that we've ever come across, but it also is fully customizable um, in that you know you can do quite a few fun things with software on it, but changing color uh, to quite a variety of different colors uh, that that they have that they offer on this. Um, it is it is a pretty neat customization. First time we've been able to offer it, and we were real excited once we started to get it to work. Um, if you're installing your own OS on this, we provide instructions to get the keyboard to work because you do have to um, install just a few pieces of software to allow it to be recognized. Um, at first we thought we would have to flash firmware, but actually, uh, as we explained in the instructions, just by uh, restarting the computer, once you install the uh, initial software, the computer will actually find the right uh, keyboard driver for it, load it, uh, and it works just great. So it was kind of a surprise to us. We thought we would have a little bit bigger battle on our hands uh, to get this to work on the bare bones model, but that actually was not the case. It does, and it integrates really well. The touchpad on this one is set back pretty nicely from the keyboard, just like on the GT783 series. Um, so I have some slight gripes with it. Uh, in comparison to the GT783, you would think they'd use the same touchpad, but they don't. Um, <clears throat> the, the actual touchpad surface itself is really um, comfortable to use. It, it uh, obviously is, you can set different settings for, um, you know, as far as being able to, to do all the different touch features and, and for the sensitivity. Um, so that's nice, and, it, and its tap features are, or its tap sensor, if you will, is, is very sensitive, so it's easy to use in that regard. The gripe that I have is that this touch bar here is very, very stiff. Now it has um, softened up some since I've been using it, but uh, dragging something, uh, a box, with this touchpad is, is kind of a chore, actually. It's not as uh, not as fluid or as easy as the touchpad on the branded MSI model. So, uh, really, from a gripe standpoint with this machine, that's about the only only thing that I have on it that really bugs me. Uh, it seems to be getting better though. So, through time, obviously, this was a brand new machine that we had built for this uh, this review, but. Uh, I would, I would assume it would soften up some, but I'm guessing it's still not going to be um, as good as, as the branded model. The next thing I wanted to go over was the input and output jacks. This computer does have a, a pretty nice um, offering there. Um, this is the back of the machine here. <clears throat> it does have a Kensington lock jack. There's our power. Ethernet, VGA, it does have a, a legacy uh, support there with the eSATA uh, and an HDMI out. We've got one of the larger uh, outputs there for our uh, fan to blow its air. And as we swing around to the right-hand side here, uh, we've got just a little smaller vent there. Um, followed up by, I'm trying to get down on it here so you can see it. Uh, you probably may or may not be able to tell those are blue. So you do have two USB 3.0 outputs, which is pretty nice. As we make our way to the right, we do have, have our... Uh, 4-in-1 memory card reader, a USB 2.0 jack, <clears throat> and then we get to the audio portion of, of uh, the computer's jack pack. Uh, MSI in general, uh, ever since they've started to release some of these uh, higher performing, a uh, little better design machines, uh, have partnered with Dynaudio. Which, um, if you're not familiar with them, they're a real high-end company. Uh, focuses solely on manufacturing audio product and primarily speakers. Uh, this particular computer continues that relationship uh, just like the branded GT783 does. The 1761 <clears throat> also uh, continues on with the Dynaudio speakers. It doesn't have the stickers or anything, but once you play it, uh, you'll know. Uh, MSI in general has, has really been uh, kind of one of the leaders in audio on a computer. Um, it's one of the very few series that uh, have that and that you actually, at least I do, feel immersed in the audio just from the speakers alone. You don't have to use a headset to feel uh, like you're getting everything. Um, as far as inputs and outputs here, this particular jack pack, <clears throat> it's a little customizable from the driver. Um, so if you're using an old analog 5.1 uh, output, you can change things around to <clears throat> make those these outputs work with that. Um, but just standard setup, you get a headphone jack, you get a microphone, 
and then these are an SPDIF and a line uh, line out. So <clears throat> if you were uh, trying to connect it to an older home theater receiver that didn't have HDMI to support the audio, uh, this computer you would you would just need an eighth inch SPDIF digital coaxial cable, uh, which can be purchased online for ten bucks or so, uh, to get the audio over to the home theater receiver. So we make our way around the front. Uh, there are no uh, jacks or anything here, or really anything notable, uh, other than your LEDs just to kind of let you know uh, whether or not certain things are on. And, and in this case, uh, we did press on our Bluetooth and our wireless earlier. So we'll get up on this here so you can see the icons. But uh, so the orange light there that's on is, is telling us that, uh, that we have kicked those on. I don't have a battery in here, otherwise this would be uh, glowing because it probably would be charging it. That's, that's our battery indicator light. This is a sleep indicator and then our hard drive indicator to let us know that the hard drive is active. As we swing around to the right hand side, it gets just a little more basic on this, uh, on this side here. You just have two USB 2.0 ports and then our optical drive. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's no button that we're used to to press this to pop it out. That has to be done by the button up at the, up at the top in the touch panel area. Um, it does have the uh, little pinhole there. You want to make a paper clip, pop it in there to push it out in case your software isn't working or you're troubleshooting something. Um, but overall, it's pretty well designed. I know a lot of people don't like the jacks in the back. Um, but you've got your video portion there, um, not things that are maybe used all the time. Uh, I think that was their design and that, uh, that they tried to, to put everything that was used commonly on the sides. I just finished one of our runs of 3D Mark Vantage here, and we're just going to sneak a peek at that. Uh, this is a GTX 570M, so it's getting up there in the, in the scheme of, uh, of graphics cards. Uh, you know, only the 580 and the, and the GTX 485 will perform better than this one in the NVIDIA family. So um, a stock score, this has a, an i7-2630 uh, and that 570. So we're getting 11 uh, 265 stock P-score on 3 Mark, which is, is quite good. Um, it's going to handle pretty much most uh, every game that's out there on high settings or, um, you know, I mean, as you go along, of course, new games come out, you might kick it down a little bit, but you're going to be running ultra to high uh, for quite a while with this card. Um, and drivers, of course, this is a stock driver, so drivers are going to improve that as time as time goes on, just as they did with the 400 series. Uh, we noticed uh, over the time about a 15 to almost 20 percent increase in performance as drivers got better. So uh, same same thing's going to going to go on here. Uh, I'll give you just a little look. Um, you can configure your processor uh, pretty much however you want, uh, depending on what you want. Um, we we did cho you know we chose a 2630 for this just uh, something that was a little more basic we didn't want to go too crazy we wanted to show you something that was pretty affordable but yet really high performing um, <clears throat> temperature wise even after that run of 3D Mark see we're back already down into the 36 and uh, even uh, you know 38 39 range in the CPU and 37 in the GPU uh, but our temps got up to 61 Celsius in the GPU which is just so good for a run um, that's a lot better than many computers are capable of, of doing even some of Asus's uh, dual fan systems run warmer than that um, this fan's also very easy to clean which I'll show you here in a little bit once we get into the components of it uh, which is another massive benefit uh, for this over some of uh, the Asus lineup which because you can't access them a full teardown would be needed in this it's not uh, CPU temps got up into the low 70s for some of the cores the primary core sat around 68, which is just right about where you want to be for load temps. Um, <clears throat> so uh, overall, uh, it's going to be a great performer from a graphics standpoint. Um, processor is up to you. Uh, there is no Optimus on this, um, as you probably would have guessed. I want to talk some about the screen, as that's um, an awfully important component of the computer. Uh, the standard screen on this is a matte finish, which we're seeing um, just growing in massive popularity uh, as the industry shifts into you know next model season and and beyond the matte finish um, seems to be one of the ways that they're going uh, obviously it's no glare so that's one of the main benefits I've personally switched over to matte finish screens on everything and have gotten quite used to the used to the look because they do have that instead of having that kind of corduroy look like they used to um, they have a slight 
I don't know if it's a graininess or, or whatnot, but um, it's something that you definitely get used to. It's, it's just the way that it's manufactured. It doesn't look bad. It's it's just the way the matte finish screens are. If you get your eye up real close to it, you know, you know you're going to see it, but you'll see imperfections in anything once you start getting there. Um, as you can see, as we're going over the side, you know, um, we're we're quite a at quite an angle here. Uh, the screen does wash some, but <clears throat> overall, it's it's pretty. It's pretty fluid up to about the 50 to 60 degree range from the zero axis and is viewable from all the way over to, uh, you know, almost <laughs> the full angle axis. As you can see probably in the camera, we're still, we're still able to see it. It does, it does wash a little bit, but not actually as much as some of the other panels we've seen. And the same thing would be expected from the other side here as well. Um, Traditionally, your vertical viewing angle <clears throat> isn't going to be as good as your horizontal is, but um, as, a, as we'll, we'll see here, we'll kind of come back a little bit on it. Um, it's, not, it's not terrible, you know, but I know you're not going to probably use your computer in this way, um, but it does wash out a lot as you, as you go above the screen. Um, as we're going to kick it below here, um, that's, that's kind of where it, it washes the most. Um, it doesn't start to do it, it doesn't start to wash it until about that point, so you can kind of see at what angle it starts to wash it. Um, this, this screen will lay quite a bit down, so depending on how you want to use it, uh, it does have a good, a good hinge there. Um, <clears throat> but overall, uh, the colors are nice. As I mentioned earlier, it is upgradable to Oh, just a variety of, of different panels. If you just wanted a standard gloss, it may not be on the screen, but it's something that you could request at a, at a lower price than the 90% the 90 gamut glossy. Um, you would just talk to a salesperson about that. It is something we, we could offer by request. Um, and then the higher end 72% gamut screens uh, for matte finish if you want more color accuracy than this, um, than the standard, which is usually right around 60% is pretty normal for uh, NTSC color accuracy on, on the standard screens. Next thing we're going to have a look at is the inside of the machine. Uh, so I've kind of propped this up here and, and taken out the screws for us already. Uh, but this large uh, plate here is the one that we're going to remove. It's the only access plate on the bottom of the computer. Uh, we've got two hard drive bays, one here and then one down here. Uh, the main hard drive bay is at the bottom. This is the secondary. Um, you do have a bracket for this one that will come with the machine. If you plan on adding your own hard drive, you need to make sure that you talk to verifications or talk to sales and ask them to include the hard drive stabilization block. Otherwise, you're going to be pushing the hard drive in there and have nothing to hold it in place. MSI doesn't use a bracket for the secondary drive. Uh, we had to buy these little hard drive stabilization blocks. Um, they do a good job holding it in there, but we purchased those directly from MSI. Uh, unless asked for, they're not going to be included with, uh, as it'll be just kind of uh, bouncing around inside there. Um, so it'll be something that you'd want to ask for. As we get in here, we've got two RAM uh, DIMMs in the bottom. And then, like a lot of other manufacturers, MSI is doing this as well. On the opposite side of that, underneath the keyboard, there are two more uh, RAM DIMMs. Uh, the keyboard's pretty easy to get to. Uh, you basically pull off your uh, speaker slash touch panel, it kind of uh, unclips and comes up, and uh, you can lift it up about four inches, kind of just set it set it aside. Your Wi-Fi card is underneath that spot as well. Um, so if you wanted to upgrade the Wi-Fi card to um, something that you want to do, uh, we also offer, of course, upgrades here, anywhere from the standard uh, Theros and Realtek cards that would be stock, um, you know, all the way up through the Intel 6230, 6205, 6300, and even the Bigfoots when they're available, the 1102 and 1103. Uh, we do add a third antenna for you uh, if you do choose the 6300 or the 1103. If you were looking for a third antenna, you would want to add that at the time of purchase uh, because it does, we do tear the machine down to uh, to properly uh, place that, that wireless uh, antenna. Uh, so we make our way uh, over here, we can see our pretty pretty good sized fan, and CPU, and GPU, and you can see the, the, both the heat sinks, the GPU heat sink is a good size, covers the entire card. It's really close to the fan, so you don't have a lot of distance that the uh, piping travels before it's cooled. Same thing with the, with the CPU. Um, you can reapply your thermal paste, whatever you want to do. Um, 
as long as you don't physically damage the machine, it's going to do nothing to the warranty. The parts that we originally install are still going to be covered the same way. <clears throat> um, the fan, in, in addition, is also really easy to remove. So it's something that, um, because of that, we, we on this system or really any system, we, we suggest every three to six months, depending on um, whether or not you have pets that shed, um, you want to crack this guy open, take out the fan, uh, clean out the fan, clean out your, your uh, thermal heat sinks with compressed air. A lot of times people will look through there and say, well, there's not really any dust that I can see at all. A lot of it gets clogged up in between your fan and your where your heat sink begin, your fan ends and heat sink begins. So if you start noticing your heat's rising and you don't feel a whole lot of air coming through here, you're not sure why, well the reason most likely is because those are clogged and they need to be cleaned. Um, it's a very common question, common thing, and um, you can typically elongate the life of the computer if you clean that every three to six months. As heat, of course, is a, a really good determining factor on whether or not a GPU lives for a long time or not, keeping the, the heat in line with what's normal. Right, one of the things we wanted to go over is just kind of the overall um, temperature on this computer and, and kind of where your hands are uh, going to sit. The, the temps on this are really good. Um, as you make your way to the, to the middle of the computer, the temperatures are going to be a little bit warmer. Um, but overall, you're, you're running quite a bit less than, we'll kick it over here, less than body temperature in these places. And the computer's been running uh, running benchmarks for you know about an hour and a half or so. Um, as you, really as you, uh, as you make your way all the way through here, everything's going to be lower than your body temp, so the computer will feel cool to you. Um, the way that they designed this computer uh, really leaves uh, a lot of the the heat to be you know kind of in in this area here and just ejected up there so your your wrist rests don't feel hot like they do on on some of the like the apples and and some of those um, but as you can see here we're flip back to celsius we're we're quite a bit lower than um, than a lot of other machines so once again this computer definitely keeps keeps it uh keeps it cool Thank you for watching Zotti PC's review of, uh, of our Force uh, 1761 model based on the, uh, the MSI GT783 series, uh, or they actually call it their 1761 series as well. Um, overall, uh, you know, my opinions are that the touchpad could, uh, at least the, the touch clickers could use a little bit of, uh, a little bit of TLC on, on behalf of uh, MSI. But otherwise, uh, overall customization options, ability to open the computer, clean it out, those things are, are huge benefits. The speaker system is, is outstanding with the two speakers and a subwoofer on the bottom uh, made by Dynaudio, which uh, is just outstanding from an from a, uh, audio lover's perspective, um, being able to use that in games and, and just uh, kind of overall around uh, the house is, is pretty huge. Uh, it comes with stock with a good screen and can get better if, if you wanted to customize that. Uh, the overall look, I don't think we got to take a look at the, the back panel here, but it's very basic, which uh, I think a lot of people can will like and appreciate. Um, we would most likely put um, our logo, logo on the machine for you, um, <clears throat> unless it uh, was not uh, requested to be put on there. Um, they can become come with our logo or without. Um, but from, uh, from the overall uh, gamer's perspective, this is going to be a, a good bang for the buck, fully customizable even to the keyboard now, um, way to get yourself into a GTX 570M for an extremely reasonable price. Um, we do have people standing by during uh, Monday through Friday online on our chat from uh, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, as well as by phone. We both have sales and, and support technicians. Uh, so feel free to come by www.exoticpc.com to check out uh, our full lineup as well as uh, the Force 1761 that you saw here today. Uh, thank you for watching and, and of course let us know if you have any questions. Thanks.